You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 11th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the world headquarters of the Cornfield Resistance, where we continue to be delighted that Donald Trump is willing to humiliate himself and the entire Republican Party over and over again by losing the same election over and over again. It's the professional left with Drift Class and Blue Gal. He's such a giver, really. He just gives, <laughs> gives and gives, gives till it hurts. Not me. I mean, I'm not being hurt, but hurts every single elected Republican in the country who are either lashed to this lunatic or are going to be nuked in the next election they're in by people who are to the right of them. So, yeah. So, yay! yeah, they're going to get primaried. Yeah. Yeah. There's going to the, the Republican primaries in 2022 are going to be lit. They're going to be. F- I'm, I'm looking forward to them. There's not much mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to. I mean, let's just skip over the next year, uh, if you would be so kind. Move to 2022. Um, cause we're it's going to feel that way. Every week feels like it's a day long right it now. And, and I believe we we came up with a sort of a, an intimate whispering in your ear, um, kind of just between you and me, um, sort of slogan and, and, and safety word and reminder for the end of the year, which is enough with the bullshit. Yes, enough with the bullshit. Enough with the bullshit. We're just we're done with the we're we're all the way done with all the bullshit. The bullshit should all, all be over. Right. As we know right. you are. I mean every everyone listening to this podcast, with the exception of the few Republicans who monitor us as if we were enemy aliens, um I, we're all sick of this bullshit. We're all sick of it. We're all just done with well, it. Well and and today it's it's the new California, New Nevada states yeah. filing amicus briefs. It's it's like an episode of Better call Saul with the guy printing his own money I've got to millions. pay his lawyer. I'll pay you in millions of dollars, new dollars, <laughs> millions. Of, you know, and I, I, I like the idea of 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 putting up a fence around them to protect them, and then then they wake up one day realizing, no, we're not. We're keeping you in. Yeah, yeah. And, it's you know, not your own country you live in. You still no. live in our country. We just have contained you with right. you know. A you horse ever, fence around you. you ever see yeah. Escape from New York? It's kind of like that. You're not <laughs> getting out, and 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 you can just have whatever weirdo, libertarian, whiny bitch fest in there you want until you know until we don't hear any noise coming from the other side of the wall anymore, and then we'll reopen the land for whatever it's going to be good for. But well, um, the problem is they take their guns inside with them. Why is that a problem? <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> eventually, without actual liberals to hate, they will invent um, schism yeah. among if themselves. If they don't get violence outside the cabin, yeah, I understand that. Oh, but they, they you can't know. function without an external enemy. That's why Bill Clinton True. had That's to become. That's the point. Bill That's Clinton had to point. become as big and terrifying as the Soviet Union in the nineties well, because they can't function without an external enemy to hate. We're we're ju- we're jumping way ahead here in our podcast yes, notes, folks. Uh, I wanted to remind everyone. That both Christmas Day and New Year's Day this year are on a Friday. What? The same day? That's amazing. No, they're not on the a, same day. Oh, two different Fridays. They're one week apart, but uh-huh. but they're both on Fridays because they are always one week apart. Uh-huh. And uh, that does not mean we won't be podcasting on those days. Of course we will. Well, Blue Gal, could you tell us what the lazy podcasters do on those days? <laughs> No, I can't no? because I don't listen to any other podcast. Oh, that's true. So, that's true. <laughs> because I'm terrified if I listen to a podcast that I'll just quote that podcast for my entire podcast. Oh, so speaking, I don't want to. Speaking of which, in the yeah. new year, just just between you and me, just as an aside, mm-hmm. I'd like to think about at least renaming our podcast to the Bullwank. Is that okay? <laughs> Is that okay with you? No. I don't no, know where I don't know where that idea came from. Sort of out of the ether. You know, you know how <laughs> sometimes a, a creative. Uh, idea just <laughs> drops into my you lap. You did not drop that in the notes. You wanted to get my genuine I laugh did. for that one. I, well, oh, that my God. Me. So the bull wank it is in the new year. <laughs> Let's go for it, baby. Hey, look, if everybody's going to rip us off and give us nothing. And I, I think- said that to, I did say that to you before we recorded today. I said our podcast has run out of bandwidth for complaining about all the people stealing from you. Yes, I know. 
because it, we're about, just yeah. everybody steals from Drift Glass mm-hmm. will be his sitcom, right? You know, it'll, it'll and, go for it, one season. <laughs> it'll go for one season. One season. <laughs> then I'll I'll be appearing in a bit role in The Mandalorian as the grievance, <laughs> as the grievance guy. You know, you know that Absolutely. whole ball. You know that ball he plays with. I invented balls. You know that I invented a little silver ball. That's me entirely. That's me. me. My that silver ball was my idea. No. And, and I will tell people that the reason this came up today is because uh, over at the Bulwark podcast, um, they started talking about how how right wing you know propagandists like heroin. And they're injecting heroin, and the, and the doses are not enough, and they have to keep increasing the dosages of heroin. Like, you know what? That's brilliant insight. Back when I came up with it 12 years ago, I guess it was just heresy. But now it's part of the uh, accepted um, script on the right, uh, at least on the woke right. And I appreciate the fact that they steal my best stuff, and I hope they use it well. And um, that's all I'll say about that. Can can I uh, pimp another podcast while we're uh, talking about podcasts? It, well, you know, uh, is it going to be um, Mike Murphy's podcast? No. Okay. No. And go right ahead. Because Bill Share. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bill Share has a new podcast called When America Worked. And it's, you know, it's a lot about uh, government working and America working and how things you can you can get back to that. You can get back to that. So I recommend Bill Share because I just like him. He's always been a friend of our podcast mm-hmm. and old school podcaster and smart guy and yeah. gets it. And he used to be on liberal oasis. If you recall that one, I do. Uh, and, and I miss the stabby five. So I miss much, the stabby five. So much. Anyway. Which, I, which as you know, I, I invented. So that's <laughs> no, cool. no, you did not. No, I didn't. All right. I absolutely didn't. We, we have to move on. Okay. Move um, on. Let's move on. Bill share when America worked, they are on iTunes. Go check him out. He's very smart. Okay. This is like the pre Christmas period in terms of news as well. Yeah. Your mailbox is stuffed with catalogs and your news is stuffed with stupidity. Yeah. And you know what? Recycle, recycle, recycle. You know, And they recycle, recycle, recycle. And particularly, can I just say how much I hate cabinet season? Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. No, I do not care. You don't like it when <laughs> Joe Biden comes out with the rose and hands it to someone? <laughs> hands it, oh, yeah. You're now no. Secretary of Veterans Affairs. That's don't great. Don't care. And you know what? Don't care. I am excited by the fact that I don't care about cabinet positions. Right, this right. This thrills me. You know what? And and you can hate us for not being pure, you know, pure as the driven snow, liberal lefty, liberal commies. That's fine. But you know what? I don't care. I don't care. Well, I don't and I care. would be I upset if, if Rahm Emanuel gets a position well, yeah, anywhere near, near the White House. I'm going to be upset about that. But, would you know, be, beyond that, look. Would I be as upset with Rahm Emanuel, who I despise, who was mayor of the city of Chicago, who was a disaster as as our, as DNC chair? Who, who, looked, who looked away from murder, murder. Uh, from by I the mean, police department? I, I mean, come get, on. <laughs> there's no love in my Not heart. Funny, for, but, I, I wrote yeah. a whole thing back when he was mayor about um, Ramses. And about stabbing yes. people in the neck with a pencil and how clown yeah, worked in yeah. Chicago. So please don't come at me about Rahm Emanuel. Will I be up as upset? Would I be as upset with Rahm Emanuel being appointed Secretary of Transportation as Stephen Miller? No. I <laughs> no. Be, because there are degrees <laughs> of outrage. There's, I, I'm able to calibrate. What I, it's not one font size for all outrage. That's what the media And nothing does. that all of the cabinet and ambassadors and – Political appointees that Joe Biden appoints combined together will equal one Jared Kushner no, in terms Bet- of evil. Or period. Betsy DeVos. Or Betsy DeVos. Or Betsy DeVos. They're, yes. They're okay. all evil people. And I'm able to distinguish between an incredibly bad choice that was made to uh, appease, you know, the Chicago Democratic Whatever. Mafia. And Except it hasn't. He hasn't appointed right. him to anything, I'm saying, so I'm, I'm not going to get upset about it no, yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm giving you a what if. If that happens, yeah, it'll be. Oh, Jesus, that was really bad. I, I bet I know why. Um, yeah. And then I'll, I'll talk probably on this podcast if that happens. I don't think it will about how Chicago politics works and how. Yeah. Mayor oh, you'd the, love to do that anyway, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. you can do that either way. But and not today. But not today. Not today, today is about no. racism. Yeah, and and that is. Uh, I guess it's part five. Is that where we're at? I, I guess we are. are. I've lost count. Political university. Because well, we're, we're doing political university up until a, the inauguration, right? Let me say it with an authoritative male voice. <laughs> Politic university part five. It's the racism, stupid. Yeah. Never forget it's about race. No. Never forget with Republicans, it's about race. No. Nope. And uh, 
Mara Gay from the New York Times was on MSNBC on the uh, Ari Melber show Thursday. And she said this, and I it really clicked with me. By the way, we have the clip up at Crooks and Liars, if you'd like to hear it. Uh, she said, it's not just that Donald Trump is undermining Joe Biden, right? It's that he's delegitimizing, as and as are his allies, they are delegitimizing the votes of Americans that voted differently than Donald Trump supporters. So you're making them un-American. And let's not forget that this country has really only been a truly representative democracy in any form for a few decades. So that history is far closer. And we don't have to look overseas to see what anti-democratic movements look like. Uh You could look in the American South just a few decades ago. Yeah. And I would argue you can look at the American South today, today after right yeah. the Supreme Court decided that the Civil Rights Act wasn't needed anymore. Mm-hmm. And, that, that was the start, and that was the starter gun to, yeah. to just start throwing up all kinds of insane Jim Crow era purges and blocks and special rules designed Making to disenfranchise. Making it difficult for Democrats to vote and mm-hmm. black people to vote. Yeah. And so she said this and it really clicked with me. And I was like, okay, I'm really glad she said that. That needs to go in the podcast. And then Ari Melber quoted some rap lyrics and yeah. fellow guest Bill Crystal chuckled. So <laughs> as you all know, our media is terribly broken. Yes, yes. Uh, we didn't go on and talk about birtherism. No. We didn't go on and talk about Newt Gingrich oh. as, we sh- as they should have devoted the entire, entire episode at that point to birtherism and the Tea Party and Newt Gingrich. Yeah. But Mara Gay got her two cents in to say, you know, we've only had a representative democracy in the United States where black people had e- had sort of equal access to the ballot box mm-hmm. in my lifetime. Yep. Yep. In my lifetime, in my lifetime, it was still illegal for interracial marriage to be performed mm-hmm. in 34 states, I think, 30 something mm-hmm. states. Mm-hmm. Um, so and, and believe me. My parents and we live next door to one of the few African-American families in our neighborhood. And we saw the results of this firsthand. Mm-hmm. You know, my this was my former father-in-law had his jaw wired shut for six weeks, I think, because mm-hmm. he challenged the racist um, uh, real estate, the the redlining, the the dividing up of black families in on, on purpose on a matter of this is the all American city at the time, mind you. Mm-hmm. Um, and they put him in the hospital. Yeah. So this is, this is direct. Uh, this didn't happen to me. I didn't suffer for this. Um, but this is absolutely directly in my memory. When my former mother-in-law was asked where she got this money, cause she d- was going to spend a $50 bill at Marshall Fields. Yeah. Um, yeah. this is m- my direct memory of this is as fresh as, you know, as this, as if it happened yesterday. So to pretend that, and, and here's the problem. That should be the entire show. Yeah, it, yeah. She should be talking about this, and Bill Crystal should be nowhere near this. Or he should not be allowed to chuckle about, about Ari Melber having rap lyrics to well, go along with Mara Gay's statement. And, right. And, and we have to remind again, not probably remind people because you all know this perfectly well, but these are these are staged events. Mm-hmm. And she's mm-hmm. not there, and Bill Crystal's not there because of an accident, or they wandered into the studio. There is an absolute casting of these segments to tell a particular story. Mm -hmm. And this story is, yes, we will acknowledge that racism is a problem. And then we're going to move on. Right. (laughs) We move on to the next thing. We don't want to go into it in depth because that will make Bill Crystal look like a lying, bloodthirsty scumbag, which is what he actually is. And now he's under contract to MSNBC and we can't say things like that. So we need to so move on. You to have in else. our notes, you have a statement in our notes, refusing to see racism and there being no racism are not the same thing. Yeah. Or claiming there is no racism yeah. are not the same this thing. Is, and this is a long history in the mainstream media. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. specifically about um, my writing about David Brooks over the decades, where mm-hmm. he, he, mm-hmm. he he jogged past a Tea Party rally and that was happening next to a black family having a reunion on the on the uh uh, near the reflecting pool in Washington. And he, and, and based on his 12 minute, you know, interaction, he, he concluded the tea party is not racist. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when he's on the Charlie Rose show 
Um, he's he's trying because they didn't lynch black people that were in the park with them right. having a picnic at the same time that they were That's rallying. Right. In that particular right? group, we can generalize about the entire Tea Party from his particular twelve minute interaction of black people being in the same vicinity as a Tea Party rally. And that's just that, and that became, you know, this the that became his column. That became his, the banner. You know, the Tea Party is not racist. Um it, he was on the Charlie Rhodes show saying, you know, I, I can't understand why why uh, Barack Obama's not doing better. It's he's he's being very specific. And it's like it's the racism. And the Guardian was saying this, Connie Schultz was saying this, but it was he was he, David Brooks's excuse, this was, you know, twelve years ago. Mm-hmm. It, it mm-hmm. was like I, I don't have a machine to look into people's hearts. And I, I don't think I don't, really don't think racism is the issue here, and it manifestly was. And and so there's a difference between um, there being no racism, and David Brooks just because he is a Beltway media person, because he is a conservative Beltway media New York Times conservative person, he will he will plunge daggers in his eyes before he will acknowledge that racism is an actual fucking problem. And this is true right across the board. Well, yeah, so talk to me for a minute about Mike Murphy and what's going on there. Oh, well, I, I wrote a little <laughs> thing, and I have to briefly uh, dive into the Bulwark universe. I hate to do this. You know how I hate this. But uh, Mike Murphy, uh, Mike Murphy is a, is a Republican strategist who has not left the Republican Party. He was being interviewed. He, and, and by the way, what does Mike Murphy do in his spare time? I saw I saw this asshole on um, MSNBC last night. You know, it, he was he was right alongside James Carville because you know these two old political paw dogs just talking about both this. Both sides? Do you mean both sides? And yeah. he was just um, so he's everywhere. He's he's has a he's a Republican strategist and he's got an MSNBC contract and he's got opinions. And when he's not doing that, he runs a podcast with David fucking Axelrod. <laughs> where they, apparently they take turns not asking each other hard questions about the Republican mm-hmm. Party. Mm-hmm. And and Mike Murphy was on the um, Bulwark podcast because that's where he goes when he has a, a spare time. And and he goes on for 20 minutes about what a bunch of fucking lunatics and traitors the Republicans are. And this whole lawsuit's insane. And, oh, my God, these people are shit. Oh, my God, they're awful. And then he says, but of course, you know, and I'm paraphrasing now, but it's, this is what he said. Uh, if I were in Georgia, I'd probably be voting for Kelly Loeffler. Because, oh because I, I think – because I never left the party. I didn't leave the Republican Party. I'm just fighting for the Republican Party. What fucking Republican Party are you fighting for? Well, it's it's, it's Reagan. You know, back when I was knee-high to whatever, Reagan was blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I, I'm a lifelong Republican. So I'm going to sit here and tell you that if I were in Georgia, I'd hate it. I think she's a moron. I think she's pliable. I think she's a crook. But I, I vote for her because given Mitch McConnell, one vote majority will keep uh, – you know, will keep Biden in the center. And I think that's very important. And also – it's very important to have ideological balance, mm-hmm. you know, between mm-hmm. the fascist party and the not fascist party. And this is Mike Murphy who will who will tell you straight to your face: Purdue's a crook, Loeffler's a lunatic. They're both terrible people. Uh, Warnock is a better person on on his worst day than either of them. But I would vote for one of them. I'd hate myself for doing it, but I have to do it because I'm a fucking Republican. Because I'm a fucking Republican and, and, and party yeah, loyalty and, trump reality. And, wow, and this is this is following him railing on other Republicans who invent bullshit excuses for backing up Donald Trump. And yeah. so the title that post is Mike Murphy is everything Mike Murphy hates about the Republican Party. He's, <laughs> he's a fucking hack. He's a fucking dirtbag hack. And he's there because there's money involved and because he doesn't want to lose future contracts by severing his ties completely. So we'll sit there telling you what the shithole Republican Party is and why people in it are lying to themselves and lying to them, making these bullshit excuses up. And then he will do exactly the same thing and say, I hate Mm -hmm. myself for doing it. But there's a higher principle involved here, ideological balance. I'm like, well, fuck you then. And that's that's the future. This is the this is the center now. You know, this is the middle. The new middle is, are these people who either lie about the Republican Party and the need to maintain balance or pe- people who lie about the Republican Party and say everything went wrong five years ago. And and that's it. That's the new center. And I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit. That is the uh, the Great Reset. But mm-hmm, I'm calling mm-hmm. it the Great Reset. You know, the, and I do listen to these podcasts and I do watch these people because I think it's important that somebody do that. And Show after show, podcast after podcast. It's, you know, five years ago, four or five years ago. This all happened five years ago. You know, when, once Donald Trump showed up, this happened. And there's this absolutely concerted party line 
that everything that happened before five years ago was just fine. And there's no acknowledgement that Obama was, you know, his, his administration was kneecapped by racists in the Republican Party on purpose because they're a party full of racists, that he was mm-hmm. robbed of his opportunity to govern, that he had a Supreme Court seat stolen, and the Republican Party reacted to Barack Obama being a generous, kind, open-handed gentleman who wanted to work with them by telling him to go fuck himself, running eight years of birtherism, and then nominating the king of the birthers. There's no acknowledgement that this is the history of their own party. And that's why I do not trust them, because that is not what innocent people would do. That is what guilty people do who don't want you to know where the bodies are buried. And that's what I have to say about Mike Murphy. Okay. Uh, but even COVID-19 can't kill both ciderism, no, Drift Glass. It can't. Oh, God. I, I, won't, I won't inflict... Um, don't inflict Politico on me. Also, don't inflict anything Politico says about the cabinet races on me because it's a pile of bullshit. I swear I won't. <laughs> I will just mention this. Um, there's a Politico article entitled, Get Off Our Damn Asses! Stimulus Debacle, debacle Exposes Broken Washington. Washington is broken. Washington is class. broken. Washington, and it's a real simple formula. If you want to get, if you want to get rich in the Beltway, it's a very simple formula. Number one, you take any Republican manufactured disaster, mm-hmm. the, the failure of any COVID relief bill to be passed out of the Congress is a Democratic due. Senate would have three checks out by now. Yeah. This is Mitch McConnell. This is yep. Mitch McConnell putting his boot on the throat of the American people because Mitch McConnell would rather see hundreds of thousands of Americans die and be unemployed than lose power in the Senate because he wants to choke off relief as much as possible, give corporations blanket relief from any any kind of uh, culpability if they force people to go back to work in unsafe environments and then dump that on the Biden administration, just like they dumped the Iraq war on Barack Obama. Obama Mm -hmm. lost the Iraq war. Don't know if you knew that, Blue Gal, but that's what really Mm -hmm. happened. So you Mm -hmm. you take any... Republican manufactured disaster. Then you find a few quotes from some shitbag Republicans. In this case, it's Senator John Kennedy from La- from from. Of course, he's very quotable. From Louisiana. from Louisiana, right? And then you hunt up some craven centrist who I call Chris Wick, which is a reference to a, a West Wing thing that I'm not going to go into. A craven centrist Democrat who's willing to shit on their own party in exchange for a few lines of media attention. In this case, it's Elisa Slotkin from Michigan. Who, who says, you know, there's blame to go around. <laughs> so now you've got, I mean, now you've got both and sides I'm doing I'm glad she won her race. I'm glad she's still in the house. But yeah, she's she's not exactly a progressive no. and, and can't be in her district. I get it. But, well, but they're going to find a quote from her that blames blames it on everybody. Yeah. Well, she, she, she can't be in a, she has to be, you know, that way in her district. She can. No gun is put to her head and forcing her to shit on her own party in Politico. Or to, or to, to even talk to a Politico either. Yeah. She doesn't have to. And yes. the rest, yes. it just comes naturally. Then Washington is broken. Both sides yep. are bad. Uh, the bipartisan group is unable to build bridges. Party mm-hmm. leaders come, blah, blah. Maybe party leaders will come out of their shells. Then a quote by Mitt Romney because, you know, he's the hero of the day. Right. And on and on it goes. Now, a reminder, this started off as a $3 trillion COVID relief package. In the spring, mm-hmm. it was cut. Right, by a it third. was passed by the House in March. Right, in March in in spring when there was frost on the ground. This was passed, mm-hmm. and and Mitch McConnell said, "Go fuck yourself." And then mm-hmm. Republicans, to appease Republicans, Democrat Democrats, cut it by a third. And then to appease centrists, you know the the problem solver caucus who last week had this all fixed and don't worry about it anymore, cut another third. And now Mitch McConnell this week is saying, "Yeah, go fuck right off. We're not going to do anything." Unless you pass my bill as I wrote it, which has my priorities in it, and screw yours, uh, you'll get nothing. Because I which know. Is, which is letting corrupt nursing homes and meat packers off the hook for yeah. any liability due to COVID. So yeah. If there's a, if they, if there's a bigger um, incidental mass murderer in American history than Mitch McConnell, I don't know who that would be. Because he's mm-hmm. perfectly mm-hmm. willing to let people die. To get political power, to hold on to political power, because that's all that this is. And what it does, and this is remarkably similar. I think I mentioned this last week to um, long-term unemployment during the Great Recession. It was the Obama administration was begging to extend long-term unemployment to, to the millions and millions and millions of people who were out of work, who were standing in lines going around the block looking for one stupid job just to get them through. 
And the Republican Congress, the Republican Senate said, oh, no, 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 no. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to give us this and this and this and this, and you're going to extend the Bush tax cuts forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, blows a hole in the deficit so we can run against you as not not caring about balanced budgets. Because Republicans don't give a shit about this country. They do not care. And I, I, I mean, Republican voters who live in my neighborhood do not care about this country. If they did, they would never vote for Rodney Davis. Would you like to talk about Pornhub? Because that's fun. Pornhub. I'd love yeah. to talk about Pornhub yeah. because uh, they take their self-policing duties more seriously than YouTube or Facebook. By the way, Facebook is uh, 48 states are suing Facebook for being a monopoly. We we aren't going to get into it any no. more than that, except that mm-hmm. Facebook is already telling their employees that case is going to take 10 years. Mm-hmm. And that they shouldn't talk about it because we're for free speech. Oh, wait. <laughs> Um, Pornhub, uh, Congressman Josh Hawley, we say of Missouri, but he doesn't really live in Missouri. Man of the people, Josh Hawley. (laughs) He tweeted, MasterCard has just informed me that they are terminating the use of their cards on Pornhub. Every accusation is a confession, Blue. (laughs) How did they inform you of this, Josh? Did you want your card to? Klein? Does that what happened? You should have taken Telly Savalas' advice and used Players Club, baby. Players Club. Players baby. Club. Well, no. ten, grain, 10 Grain blogged in response. The first step in, is admitting you have a problem, Josh. Yeah, master what? What? What's the name of the card again? Master what? So, uh-huh. yeah. I want to um, disagree with you a little bit on sure. your great reset where history begins in 2016. Sure. Because I think there's also going to be a reset where we just start in 2020 with Hunter Biden's taxes. Oh. I agree. Because if, if you if you watch Fox News these days, uh, just using the most extreme and most stupid example, you can always go to Brian Kilmeade at Fox and Friends. And he just started yelling about Hunter Biden, laptops, crack cocaine, China, China, laptops, naked crack users on film. <laughs> Cats and dogs living together. Ah, 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 ah. Mass hysteria. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then he realized you know, this Hunter Biden thing, it could be worse than Watergate. Wait a minute. What happened during Watergate? The president had to resign. That means we'll have President Kamala Harris. Oh, no! <laughs> and then the the other clip of the week was that was just unbelievable was Lou Dobbs and Stephen Miller screaming at each other for two minutes. Two minutes overlap, hate. Overlap, overlap, overlap. It was, just, two minute, it was two minutes hate. It really was. It was. What are the Republicans doing? What about these mail-in ballots? What about this? What? And it just went on and on and on for two whole minutes of them just screaming. Mm-hmm. Make Trump president for life. For God's sakes, do it. And Lou Dobbs, as for all appearances, genuinely believes that. And Stephen Miller, oh, yeah. what, he wanted to smirk and talk about immigration. And yeah. Lou Dobbs yeah. wanted to grab him by the, his his narrow lapels and yep. shake him and demand to know, you work in the goddamn White House. Why aren't you fixing this? Why aren't we Why out aren't you the making earth? Donald Trump president for life? You're the one who can do it. Yeah. And here's here's the context of all of this. Um, yeah. This week, Newsmax beat Fox News in the ratings for one episode of one show. And that is the first hole in the Titanic. That's the first sea animal climbing onto the land. That is an yeah. evolutionary yeah. moment. It's like, oh, oh. They actually beat Fox News at being Fox News for one mm-hmm. show for one hour. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. If they do it at all, they can do it again. And that is the purpose. That is why Lou Dobbs exists on that show. That is why Mark Levin was on Hannity on Thursday night. Being reasonable. And he, was compa- he was comparing the Hunter Biden cover-up uh, to the Holocaust. Yeah. You know, the New York Times covered up the Holocaust, too. Yeah. And now they're covering up for Hunter Biden. Just like the Holocaust. And we're, they're just slipping right back into, the, as you said, the, the hate talk mm-hmm. that they did during the Obama administration. Oh, well, yeah. That's that they did they're... during Clinton. It's, it's, it's exactly this sweet spot that they have. They do much better during Democratic administrations because they can just unleash, you know, all of it and lie and lie and lie and lie. Uh, and... I don't know about you, Drift Class, but this time around, I'm just sick of it. Oh, yeah. Well, and this uh, time around is the problem. It, it is, yeah. We have been on this merry-go-round so this many This is the times. third time. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And 
So they're going to make Hunter Biden a thing. And and then Trump himself today said, you know, everyone replied to him with, I see you conceded because he said the Biden administration in the tweet. The Biden administration is going to be nonstop corruption. <laughs> Every admission is a confession. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, might, might, I might post this up at my blog mm-hmm. um, only because um, I'm going to read you three lines from it, maybe. Maybe. Listen to any aging wingnut sighing and jerking sadly off to a tattered photo of St. Ronnie, despite the fact that the catastrophes that are now reaping, that we are now reaping, were sown by his ruinous ideology. And you can hear every addict who ever lived pining for the first perfect high. Mm -hmm. The one they spend the rest of their days chasing, regardless of the size of the debts they run up or the ruined lives they live in their wake. They leave in their wake. I talk about Clinton. This is something I wrote. I talk about Clinton being methadone maintenance, man. That shit's for babies. And Bush, Bush was ketamine, man. Bush was Bush was awesome. Bush was killing people. Bush was bombing brown people in a foreign country and fuck the debt. And that's why they hated Obama because Obama didn't want to give them heroin anymore. And they need ever – this is – and this – I wrote in 2008, Blue Gal. Mm-hmm. I wrote this 12 years ago. And it was like this is what happens to addicts when – they have an escalating need for ever higher doses of crazy. And the Republican Party, the leadership of the GOP, everyone you see who's now a never Trumper was a pusher. Everyone you see on, on Fox News is a pusher. Everyone you see on Newsmax is working a different corner saying, oh, no, my shit's much better. It's much, much. It, this, this shit will blow the top of your fucking head off. And they need – that's why they need a secession talk because they need blood in the streets. They need that kind of talk. They need crazy. They need – Pure, large bore needle crazy delivered directly to their amygdala. And they will not settle for the low dose alternatives of CNN or the mm-hmm. quiet talk of the New York Times conservative section. Even the National Review is like, screw you guys. Eric Erickson, who, who is just about as bottom feeding a scumbag as you're ever going to find, wrote an article this week about how am, I the, how am I the normal one? How am I the sane one? He's looking at this Texas lawsuit going, you must be kidding me. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, mm-hmm. I'm the guy who said, you know, Souter is a goat fucker. Yeah, I'm right, the guy who did right. this. I own all my sins. I'm a terrible person. You're right. I'm a terrible person and I, I revel in it. But this is too far even for me. But there's 74 million people in this country who are going to go to their beds tonight believing that, that Joe Biden stole the election. Mm-hmm. And those people are Chekhov's gun. Mm-hmm. Sitting on the wall waiting for someone to come along with the, exactly the right combination of heroin and paranoia to to turn them loose on this country, and that and if we had a mainstream media that would say that, we'd be in much better shape as a country than we are now. Well, but what we have are and and I want to get back to this idea yeah. of two, you know, the the things to listen for, and one is the mess in Washington. If if someone is saying the mess in Washington, or is saying as Chuck Todd said this week, we made mask wearing political. Uh huh. And someone replied on Twitter, who the fuck is we? Yep, that might have been me. <laughs> no, no, it was someone else. But but I'm glad to see more and more people coming to the same conclusions. Uh-huh. That when you, when you do this, when you whitewash the Republican Party or make it equal or make it a problem in Washington, when you go bland on people so that it's not this is a Republican problem – what you are doing is enabling white nationalism. Yes, you are. This is a racist thing to do. You are covering up for racists who want to delegitimize black votes. Mm-hmm. And we need to bring that up every single time. Why are you enabling the white national? There's only one party that's white nationalist. There's only one party that wants to delegitimize black votes. Both sides don't want eliminationist rhetoric about black votes, right? black ballots. Well, that's, but we that's, have eliminationist rhetoric about ballots that's why that they, are cast by black people. That's why Rush Limbaugh going on about secession this week right. being right. shocking is the least shocking thing of all. Rush right. Limbaugh has been talking eliminationist shit for 30 years. Mm-hmm. If you don't know that, if you're in the Washington Post writing breathless columns about this, then you are either 12 years old or you haven't been paying attention. Either way, you really shouldn't be writing about things you don't fucking understand. You mm-hmm. live in a world where Rush Limbaugh is some new phenomena that just came up yesterday. And, oh, my God, who's this guy? And why is he able to do this? And what's his thing about? 
that shouldn't be someone who has a column in which their opinion is taken seriously anywhere Mm -hmm. at all. The people who should be listened to are the people who've been listening to Rush Limbaugh with rising horror for 30 years. And those people are called liberals, frankly. And uh, so you and I don't really disagree about about 2020 because there's going to be two different resets. One is for the Fox News Republican base voter. They're not Trumpists. They're not Trumpers. They're Republicans. For them, it's Hunter Biden's taxes all the time. For all the people who want to be the new center, who you, we used to know as Bush regime dead enders, and now they're called never Trumpers, um, the reset is going to be all this began five years ago. All this began five years ago, Mm -hmm. and the Mm -hmm. extremes on both sides are the problem. Those crazy people over talking about Hunter Biden's taxes, those aren't my people. The crazy liberals talking about Medicare for all and climate change, they're not. They're the extremes on both sides, Blue Gal. Us, Mm -hmm. those of us who can all agree that it was all Donald Trump's fault and all started five years ago, we're the reasonable center. And those people will have jobs until they choose not to. Because that's the message that the Beltway media wants to hear. The people yeah. who fund the Beltway media want to hear. Um, it's not the this week. I should say as an aside, we found out who funds the Federalists, and we'll talk about yes. that next week. But uh, the mystery is solved. Uh, it's so let's, a, let's just talk about it now. It's 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 exactly who we thought funded the Federalists. Yes. It's it's right? the it's the Illinois crackpot right wing billionaire, right? Um, right. Who funded? I believe the Illinois Policy Institute. Illinois which, Policy you know, Institute. It's you is, line. It's yeah. the Uline founder. Yeah, it's and it's exactly who we thought it was. So no mystery. The mystery is that there's no mystery. Uh, yeah. The mystery is why would you want to keep it secret? Because he should be proud of his fascism. Look, you wear a brown shirt in public. You don't sleep in it. You go out in public <laughs> and you run around. You say, "I love the dear leader." That's how you get off. That's how you get cred. So why are you hiding, dude? Come out in the open. We all know who you are now. So why not just strut your fascist stuff up and down the middle of the street so we can all admire it? Um, so all we're right. not in that so, much of an agreement. Please, please don't forget to mention racism every time you're talking about this, because that is what's happening in the media. They are enabling white nationalism. And they don't like to hear that. No. <laughs> Make them very, very mad. Yeah. Um, do you want to do a news roundup or do you want to talk? Yeah, about let's it? do a news All roundup. Right. All 50 states and the District of Columbia have certified their presidential election results. And for like the what is it, the 13th, 15th time? Mm hmm. Joe Biden has won the presidency. So much winning, Blue Gal. You know, again, so much winning. I'm sick of winning. At this point, I literally am not. I'm literally sick of winning. (laughs) I'm not sick of winning yet. (laughs) Uh, On the other side of the 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 coin, new unemployment claims rose to 853,000 last week. That's the highest level since September, and an increase of 137,000 from the week before. These are great recession numbers. Um, Yeah. And there's no denying that. Not, real people uh, say, he means to say is these are numbers equal to the Great Recession yeah. is what he means. Not yeah. Great Recession numbers. Yes. No, no, these are these are when the when the Bush administration destroyed the global economy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, mm-hmm. is the, this is what we saw, and it was exactly this is why jump Mitch McConnell and Republican Party's behavior then jumps to mind now, which was oh great a whole bunch of suffering Americans. And and the Democrats actually care about them, so we can hold them hostage to the fact they care about America to get our evil shit done. And Republicans are perfectly willing to shoot the hostage all day long. Democrats aren't. So that's right. the difference. Right. Anyway. Uh, in COVID news, by the way, Devin Nunez has tested positive for COVID. Uh, in addition to that, the United States recorded more than 3,100 3, COVID-19 deaths in a single day, exceeding the record set one week earlier. It's the first time the U.S. recorded more than 3,000 deaths in a single day, and it comes two weeks after Thanksgiving. Yeah, no surprise. More than a third of Americans living in areas where hospitals have fewer than 15% of intensive care beds available. The CDC director, Robert Redfield, directed staff to delete an email from the Trump political appointee attempting to meddle with the agency's scientific report on the coronavirus's risk to children because Trump wanted to reopen the schools at that point. Mm -hmm. And an FDA advisory panel recommended the approval of Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine for emergency use in people over 16 years old. There's also a leak today that the president's chief of staff was going to fire the, the person from the FDA if they didn't approve the vaccine by tonight. Right. So So we're, we're, Totally politicizing this all on one side, by the way. Yeah. By the way, the CDC, uh, if I understand correctly, have, has said, don't travel. 
just don't yeah, travel. Just don't do travel. not go home for Christmas. Do not go home for Hanukkah. Don't travel. If I don't know how much clearer we can be, traveling for the holidays and gathering is bad. Just don't do it. And you know what? The spring will be much better. But it's just a terrible, terrible, and and heartbreaking idea that you just keep seeing. At, at, two weeks after everything, two weeks after every warning, there's another spike. And we all know why that is. Uh, and what we're calling the stupid coup goes on and on because the Republican Party still exists. Uh, this week, and it's getting scarier, Kim Ward, the GOP majority leader of Pennsylvania State Senate, told the New York Times that she feared that if she indicated her opposition to efforts by President Trump supporters to reject the state's election results, Trump supporters would bomb her house. That's terrorism. That's terrorism. Meanwhile... Idaho health meeting ended abruptly in the interests of public safety, quote unquote, after anti-mask protesters showed up at the officials' homes. And there's a, a video of a woman crying and saying, I have to leave because my kids are home and these lunatics are outside my house screaming about freedom or whatever. Um, this was the week that Rush Limbaugh advocated secession and the establishment of the Confederate Safe Spaces of America, which will be a permanent wingnut snowflake refuge. Uh, and finally, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson, who is currently under investigation for security fraud, I believe, and probably pardon shopping because of that, filed a lawsuit Tuesday asking the Supreme Court to invalidate the ballots of millions of voters in four battleground states despite no evidence of widespread fraud. Pennsylvania called the lawsuit a, quote, seditious abuse of judicial power, sedition. Look it up. And Georgia's Attorney General uh, Chris Carr called the lawsuit, quote, an attack on Georgia's sovereignty that should be dismissed outright because it, quote, is constitutionally, legally, and factually wrong. Trump, meanwhile, warned Carr not to rally other Republican officials against the lawsuit in a 15-minute, and I can only assume, profanity-laden phone call. Mm -hmm. The House passed a $741 billion defense authorization bill by a veto-proof margin. However, Trump has threatened to veto the bill anyway because it doesn't repeal Section 230, a law that shields Internet companies from being liable for what's posted on their platforms. Like hashtag contains, Diaper Don. Right. Diaper Don. And contains provision that will limits how much money he can allocate for his border wall and the requirement that Confederate names be stripped from American military bases. You know what? The whole idea that can't pass anything is obviously bullshit. You it's can pass bullshit. a trillion dollar mil a military bill. And well, you can pass a defense authorization bill and the Senate will go along with it, but they won't go along with helping individuals eat for Christmas. Yeah. Now, we have some local news. Um, and it involves congressmen in our area and their reaction to the uh, Texas treason that's currently going on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Among the 106 congressional Republicans who have signed on to the openly seditious Texas plot to toss out the now certified 2020 election results and illegally installed Trump for a second term. There are two congressmen from down here in Trump country, Darren LaHood and Mike Bost. Uh, LaHood represents Illinois 18th Congressional District. And since his offices are about a mile away from where we're talking right now, we thought it was worth noting that LaHood just won re-election with 66,000 more votes than he got in 2018. So, you know. I guess the whole drive down Republican voter uh, stuff didn't really work out. So should any patriotic American wish to visit his congressional offices and let him know what you think of his treason, his address is 235 South 6th Street in Springfield, Illinois. This is not his home address. This is no, congressional his office. office. It's open to the public. It's on a big old street corner right in downtown Springfield. And you should pay him a visit and let him know what you think because he's your congressman or at least he doesn't know any better. And you should let him know what you think about him committing treason against the government of the United States. Um, you want to go with the next also, one? You, you you should know that he's the one that replaced Aaron Schock. Yeah. Um, you know, the very fancy man who had the fancy office. Decorated. Uh, the Downton Abbey decorated office. Yeah. 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 That didn't work out so well for him. And we wish him well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the the other slab of Republican stupid, as you have it in our notes. Uh -huh. uh, our actual congressman, the one that represents our House, represents us in Congress, is Rodney Davis. And Rodney Davis did not sign on to the Texas treason. We should we should note that and be grateful for it. Uh, but he here is, and we should hat tip Steve. Steve sent this to us. He did. Uh, here's what he did have to say about the election. Pay special attention to the fact. 
that the interview took place at WGLT Radio, which is in Bloomington Normal, at the University of Illinois State. The State University Illinois in State Bloomington University. Normal. Yeah, Illinois yeah. State University. That's the NPR affiliate there. All right. Okay. Uh, Davis made the statement that Kelly Loeffler's made and that seems to be Republican boilerplate, which is Donald Trump has every right to make sure that every legal challenge he and his team want to mount is made. He has every right to wait until the Electoral College votes, etc. Uh, and he should he has the right to pursue all legal options. That's that is boilerplate Republican response. Yes. But then. WGLT asked the most NPR question yeah. Drift Glass has ever I, heard. I, I think <laughs> it must have been his birthday or something because <laughs> it, this is a gift to Rodney Davis because it is probably the most NPR question I've ever heard. It's not a softball. It's a marshmallow it's and a it's marshmallow. sweet. It's yes. a sweet, sweet reach around sweet, from NPR. Sweet, sweet reach around marshmallow. Um, Here we go. And here's the guy interviewing Rodney Davis. After President Trump won the 2016 election, many people on the left refused to accept him as their president. Not my president was the saying. And now we have the opposite of that happening with the president refusing to concede an election that he clearly lost. Where does this end? This unwillingness to accept political opponents' victories. That's unhealthy, isn't it? Both sides. Both sides. And, and, went, and, and Hillary Clinton went on for months not conceding, right? Oh, yeah. Is that, that what happened? Remember that? The law, the lawsuits, the many, many, many lawsuits. No, and, she didn't. No, that all doesn't exist on NPR because it would get in the way of their stupid fucking both sides do it story. So, Rodney yeah. Davis, don't you think both sides are equally he, wrong he here? He savored that marshmallow so much. He yeah. said, oh, you know – it's an issue of the polarization of our country and how polarized everything is, and it's so polarized. And, you know, I've talked about it numerous times. I try to be as bipartisan as I am. Mm-hmm. And then he it's, got- I'm not surprised at the far ends of the political spectrum. You mean your president? Yeah. Well, shush, shush. We're not supposed to talk. The far about. ends of the political spectrum have had similar reactions to electoral losses. He's talking about the president. His entire fucking party and the leader of the country. 106 House members and the president. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and then he gets off on, you know, if they were so concerned about the Electoral College, maybe duly elected members would start talking about what happened with Mariana Miller Meeks in Iowa running for Congress. I've never fucking heard of her. I don't no. care. So apparently she won by six votes and it's a big thing. Because, yeah, one Iowa election congresswoman, of one right. congresswoman with a six it's extremely margin close is That's exactly the same close. is exactly yeah. the same as donald trump dragging this out for months now because the democratic question party in iowa is questioning her victory because they're like six votes apart yeah and and wants to a recount and and that's exactly the same as donald trump losing by seven million votes and his opponent joe biden having Exactly the same number of electoral college votes that Trump had when he won in 2016. Uh-huh. Uh, now, anyway, I must I must note that mm-hmm. as with Congressman Bost, uh, Rodney Davis increased his vote total um, by around sixty thousand, I believe, over two thousand. Well, the turnout was that much higher, and you know it is proportional. Yeah, but he won big, that, that, and he was he was surprised by that. He was yeah. surprised by that. But the fact is that. Republicans, because of vote by mail, increase their vote totals in this area. Yes. That so, it should not surprise anyone. When we make it easier to vote in Republican areas, there are going to be more Republican votes. I don't have a problem with that. I still want vote by mail everywhere. I do too. And I think I think if we get college students to vote and put pot on the ballot again. <laughs> <laughs> put pot in the ballot, frankly. In the ballot. There yeah. you go. There you go. Oh Lord. You just you, you put it you put rolling paper on the outside, you put a little <laughs> weed in the corner, oh, deliver it. And well and but here, here's my point. My point is not I don't want vote by mail. I want everyone to vote. It is that um we live in Trump country. We have yeah. had four years of madness, treason, corruption, plague, criminal negligence, and actual crimes mm-hmm. and just every day. And Rodney Davis won his election with more votes than he got last time, mm-hmm. as did most Republicans, frankly. And he sits around talking about how he wants to be bipartisan when he voted to take away my health so, insurance so multiple this, times. This yeah. idea that these people can be reasoned with, 
that the, the events happening in the real world to them, to their families, will in any way penetrate their Fox News rotted brains is ridiculous. And I, I keep seeing Twitter arguments about how if we just reach out a little further, got to be understanding. You're sure there's some of them this and some of them that. You know what? My patience with reaching out to Republicans ran out right about the time they decided to fuck over Barack Obama, just for mm-hmm. the fun of it. And the whole party stood with up and cheered. With terrorism, cheer. with and racism. You, and you know what? Because they're racist. It's real. And if you weren't racist, you were perfectly okay with your party and your people and your representatives and your news sources using racism as a bludgeon to mm-hmm. knock the first African-American president to his knees. And that means you are complicit. And there's no amount of resetting or whitewashing or let's all look at Hunter Biden's uh, laptop that's going to make right. you forget that when the when when the country needed you, you fucking stabbed us in the back and laughed mm-hmm. about it, mm-hmm. and then won the next election because you ran you ran an open racist because he was yep. the most racist person you could lay your hands. He was on. a birther. Yep. Yep. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Slade. Slade belongs to old school blogger Athena of First Draft, and she writes, Slade, it, the name suits him. If he was a human, he'd be wearing an Ed Hardy t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Slade eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Slade at our Facebook page or website. You can send your Internet Kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, or you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag Save the Post Office. We love getting Christmas, Hanukkah, and New Year's cards from you, so feel free to send them in. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself in the holidays, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. We have our PayPal postal address information, Patreon. Shout out to all our Patreon supporters. All of it is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, exciting week. The Internet Kitties just got their acceptance letter from the Electoral College, and boy, are they excited. They're going to Electoral College? They're going to Electoral (laughs) College. All of them got in. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.